My name is Tommy Jenkins. I'm from a place called Town Hill in, in the city of Swansea. I got involved in music at a very early age in chapel. That's where I started to sing because I tried to drown everybody else out. Um, I, then I developed a loud voice because of the chapel singing. Well, I first got involved in music in uh, when I started watching bands like uh, Bystanders, like Eyes of Blue, and um, they were playing the Tower Bowl and I wanted to be a rock and roll star. Later I got involved in a band called um, Lot 13, uh, which was just kind of soul band. Um, play, also playing a bit of what they call blue beat then, you no know, reggae, um, I think. Um, then I got a bit bored of that, with the trumpet, because it started to be too loud, so I played acoustic guitar. And then I got involved listening to Dylan, Joan Baez, Woody Guthrie, and all the blues men, and um, started going down the introspective route, you know, and trying to express myself. I wrote a few songs, they were rubbish, but um, contemporary rubbish that was. Um, so I then was in London, I heard a band called the Chieftains, Irish band, and it posed a question in my head Does this kind of music exist in Wales? I never knew it. The only thing I'd ever heard was choirs and a bit of a soprano out of tenor bass in the Eisteddfod, um, which is very classical. I never heard that kind of folk singing or that kind of jigs, hornpipes, reels, airs. So I came, I met, I had the fortune to meet up with a man called Roy Sire. He was um, worked in St. Fagans, which is a museum just outside Cardiff. And he was, he was in the All Ireland Dialects Department then. Uh, so was, I think he was assistant curator, not sure. Well, I asked him to give me some help and point me in the right direction where I could find manuscripts or books and stuff like that. How could I find this or whether it existed? Well, he did that and he pointed out a couple of books to me. One was po Poetical Relics of the Welsh Bards by Edward Jones, published in 18, 18 something or whatever it was. No, 1784, was it? And the other two were Alawan van Glad by Nicholas Bennett, the uh, copies one and two, which was published in 1802. And within this book, within these books, were tunes that were absolutely stunning. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine called Fred Ryan about this, and it, and it just happened in, he lived in Carmarthen, uh, Carmarthen in Port Talbot. And um, we're there was a guy called Pete Brown, who was a mate of. Uh, People on wrote the lyrics of uh, Sunshine of Your Love for the Cream. And he said, I, you know, Bill introduced me. He said, What are you doing? I said, Oh, you're giving smelling salts to the old tunes, are you? Uh, and I, I thought, What a great man. I wish I'd thought of that. But I, I, I can't take it away. Take it. <laughs> I'm bound to cross the ocean, girl, once more to part from you. Once more to part from you, fine girl, you're the girl that I adore. But still I live in hopes to see old Swansea down. Yes, I speak Welsh. But I wasn't brought up speaking Welsh. I was brought up in an English, well, where I come from, it's not, an English, it's not, it's not a Welsh speaking area. But I, I learnt Welsh and I learnt it in the, on an old pan course uh, in, in Swansea University, which was an intensive course. And, um, but my problem is, uh, I, I don't speak, I sign Shadok and Rag and I, and I don't speak, and I sign Riggle, I'm not fluent, but I do try. Um, after, the reason why I, why I started learning Welsh is because I wanted, after meeting Roy Sire at the Orland Dialects Department, I started looking at these Welsh folk teams and um, Welsh folk songs, and I wanted to sit, wanted, I, I got through the melodies, wanted to sing them, and said, then that was the reason I wanted to learn Welsh. Um, then I progressed from that, then learning with, with some help from various people with, with the pronunciation. And I formed a band called Cromlech, because, um, which is a standing stone, two, it's like three, it's like a tripod with a flat stone on top. Um, this seemed to fit in with um, with the culture, with, with 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 the folk tradition, and it give a kind of mystic edge to it as well, which you know. Um, 
then I, I was, I was sort of introduced to a couple of people to play, like Pete Stacey on flute, Stevie Wishart on fiddle, uh, with the others now, um, Deleth Evans as she was then on harp, uh, and myself on crumhorn and guitar. I mean, recorded an album called Gulitha Border or The Morning Dew with the sign better company who, who was uh, who's head then CEO or whatever you call him it was David Ewan this sort of uh, the influential uh, Welsh folk singer of the 60s who went to jail for the Welsh language and was a, a prominent supporter of Cundaitha Siri Aith which is the, the Welsh Language Society um, this album was released which we recorded up in North Wales in the old studio in Llandundra and then it was released and from there it was like a passport because that album led to us going to um, various places like especially Galicia, northwest Spain, the Celtic part of Spain, to uh, Germany, Belgium, Holland, Sardinia and it goes on and on and on. Um, and well, that was in actual fact, people watched us there. We couldn't fill a bathroom in Wales. So that was, that was kind of um, how I, I, I formed Cromlech and wanted to. I, want, I, wanted, I, wanted, what I really wanted was to bring Celtic folk music, Welsh folk music, up to the level of Irish or Scottish music so that people would recognise Wales as a place where you can hear folk music in the folk style rather than being in the classical style. Oysters, 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 gee. Are some of the finest oysters that ever you did see. Oh, to three a penny, I just Well, I didn't write them, they were traditional. They were, they, they were, they were songs I got out of books, um, and which I, I liked. In, and the, some of the songs were well, some of the songs you teach you in school, like Back in Back or Dinko, Little Tinker Boy. And other songs that it, I just found, and, and as people would say, Peter um, gave the smelling salts to her and try try to sing them. I try to sing them not in the classical style, style as they were done before, but try to sing them with, with, with a normal voice. I haven't got a good voice, but upon it, just a normal voice which hasn't been trained. It just I just sing it as it comes. You know, it's in my style, my way, and. Rather than being in this classical sense, which, I, which I, to me uh, doesn't fit the folk music sound, because the folk music is of the people. I can't see the people singing in Italian soprano without the tenor bass style. Um, uh, so I had a problem with that. So besides, I can't sing very well. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, said he. I see a little oyster girl that came along with me. She had paid all her reckoning, so now the can go free for to travel with her. I played, in the early days, I played a trumpet. But after, when I got involved in folk music, I, I played a crumb horn, uh, acoustic guitar, finger style, and a zither. Now, the reason I played a crumb horn, initially I wanted a pib gone. Pib gone is a horn pipe. It's made up of um, horn on the end, wooden pipe bit, and another horn near end. But nobody was making them then. And so, in my imagination, I thought the closest I could come to it would be a crum horn. So that was really how I started to play crum. Because really what I wanted to do was, it was, was imitate the sound, maybe, of three, four hundred years ago of how people, where people were dancing and the instruments that were used in those particular days were a cruth. It's a form, old form of violin, pib gone and harp. So this is what I was trying to get, trying to get it, but I still I couldn't get a pib gone, so I used a crumb horn. And basically, we 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 just raided the the books that I, well, as I said to you earlier, of um, of Edward, Edward Jones and Nicholas Bennett and some other sources, and played them out like the jigs, hornpipes, reels, and airs of Wales. And the folk songs of Wales. Um, it was interesting because when we, these songs were, were played to people on the continent, especially in Galicia, where we, where, we, where we toured several times, and it was interesting because I didn't realise that the Celtic 
all origins there were Celtic music was being played in, in Galicia. So I met bands like um, Mijidoiru. Um, I met another band a bit later called Luar Lubre, which means Light in the Oak Grove. A great friend of mine, Bieta Romero, is, is the leader of them. And we were playing this place in uh, Ponte Vedra, in, 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 in a, looked like a bull ring. And they joked on at me and they said, look, we were on stage doing our sound check in the middle thing. He said, yeah, the bulls come out now, right? And they were, they're going to go around the thing. Are you joking? Um, anyway, it wasn't that. But it, what, what amazed me was after Franco died and it, it was and Galithia was flourishing into, for, for, for that instance, they had, they, they were free to dance, free to speak their, speak, speak their Gallego, the language, and to play their music, which was banned in Franco. So it was a great flower in the culture, and I happened to be at the, at, at the right time and at the height of it. Um, so it was brilliant playing along with these guys who were amazing musicians, you know. And um, then we played the first festival in Ortegera, first Celtic, well, the Celtic, uh, World Celtic Festival in uh, Ortegera. And bands like um, Boys of Loch uh, from Scotland. Uh, Miji Doiro from Galicia, a Miyokawa harpist from 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 Galicia, uh, some other people which I can't remember the names of, and and this was amazing. You had about ten, fifteen thousand people there, and that was that was an amazing festival, you know. And it was, I just got to the right time. What happened? I was in I was in Kamar then, and I saw this order harp. In, 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 in an Oxfam shop and he was hanging on the shelf and I thought, look, so I've always hated to see an instrument in people's homes that are hanging on the wall or down by the fireplace, you know, and look, and, and so I really, they should be played, not, not hang up as ornaments or masterpieces stuck on a wall, you know. So I saw this auto harp and it looked very lonely and I thought, well, look, I'll, t I, I, I'll have a relationship with it and, um, and see if I can play it, you know, and and then took it home, strung it up, um, tuned it up, and I loved it. I, I, and I, and I, it was just, there's no other reason, there's no, no, no kind of um, link with Welsh culture. I just loved the sound of it, and, and, and I loved the way it fitted its, its, its back in, it's the choral structures at, behind the voice, suited my voice. And so then, I started, started playing the auto harp. This is an auto harp. It was made by a guy called Pete Daigle, and it's, I love it. And basically, the auto harp is these buttons. You press one button down, and that plays a chord. So the first row are your minor chords. Second row are your major chords. And the third row is what I call the jazz chords, B sevenths and all that, but I don't use those. Well, as we're in the winter season, there are, there, there, there are songs that I play which are linked to customs that that happening. One is called the Wassailing tradition, the other is called the hunting of the wren tradition, and the other one is called uh, the Mary Lloyd or the Grey Mare, as translates as. Or, um, and these songs are, are rituals, ritual songs, and they're played this time of year because at this time of year, with, 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 with the sun going down and the days getting, getting shorter and shorter, um, people. People in people in the past, the ancients, they thought uh, that it was it was an end. So when so, so they, they marked this time of the year with these songs, and they, they were basically songs to um, to give hope for, for 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 the spring coming. And for, but this these songs were sung around the uh, the twenty first. The first one is interesting, which which is the Cutty Wren. The Wren song used to hunt it. But I, I got my doubts about the hunting because it's such a small little bird. They wouldn't hunt it. They probably it was because the, the wren 
was in druidic terms was a symbol of the sun so at, at the winter solstice on 21st of uh, December they thought the sun died and then and then three days later it would re, it would it would re-emerge re and be the new sun which is capable of um, fertilizing the crops and bringing the circle round again. Where are you going? Says a Melditon bell. Oh, where are you going? Says the younger to the elder. Oh, I cannot tell you. Says Fessel to fall. You're going to the green. Says John the Red No. Oh, what will you do then? Says a Melder to Melder. Oh, what will you do then? Says the younger to the elder. Oh, I cannot tell you. Says Fessel to fall. We'll hunt the cutty wren. I've always been listening to music. I, I, I love it as a child. I had polio as a child, and when I was asked to be lying in hospital, listening to music on on the, those little bins, as they call them, then things stuck over headphones, stuck over you, and I was listening to all kinds of music there, and I, I loved it. And I couldn't. I had a plastic trumpet, which I brought into the ward, so I started doing to play, trying to driving everybody crazy on the wall with this blast and this plastic trumpet. Um, yes, yeah, so it, it's 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 and it, nobody else in my family is involved in music. It just just happened to be that I like music, and I and, and I, I eventually followed the path of music, which has been uh, brilliant. So you're always learning. It's, it's 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 an ongoing process. It's never when people say to you, "Oh, I've reached my you know I've done my bet," and they 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 really, they haven't really because the point is you you still go on and on and on and on, on learning. I started playing trumpet, and f friends of mine were forming this band. Um, but they were they were already together, and they had a, a keyboard, far easier organ. Billy Maunder, Billy Maunder was a singer. He had a kind of gravelly voice, and he spoke with a mid-transatlantic accent. And um, then he had Frank, Frankie Hughes on bass, Pete Young on the guitar, uh, me on trumpet, and um, and a guy who eventually went with Amy and Corner called Mike Smith on sax. And we just played the the, the, the the normal soul standards, you know. And um, we didn't do any recordings because uh, in those days, you know, it was we not where we just didn't do it. Um, why I don't know. Pre sixty seven, about sixty five, you know, we all brought up. We used to wear wearing like things like Moa suits, uh, which cost a fortune, you know, and we all had them. Uh, we had photographs in these Moa suits, these pork pie hats, and. We were playing stuff like um, Al Capone's Guns Don't Argue, you know, which is the way Billy Maunder would uh, introduce it. You know, it would be, Al Capone's Guns Don't Argue. So that was my beginnings in soul music. <laughs> okay, so 83, 84 was, was Galitha Bore, the morning it was the first album. Then we released another album called Igamogam, which meant zigzag. And that was that that was cut down finally because it was more of acoustic set. With the first one, it had a kind of a rocky element to it, you know, it had the bass and it was up tempo and all this. But the second one, maybe it was bad, maybe it wasn't the right direction, but it was more like symphonic, you know, more like a chamber music, you know. And um, where we used hurdy gurdies, um, zither, uh, pipes, whistles, um, the Welsh backpipes were first first were played on there because they we I had I didn't claim that there were Welsh backpipes, but I didn't know because there was no uh, existing pipes at all. But there was iconographic evidence in a church called Flanelin up in North Wales of this piper. So Pete Stacey and I chatted about this and we eventually introduced because first of all you got a pair of gaiters. So gaiters is a Galithian pipe. I said there must be must be some some people can make us a Welsh pipe from 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 the drawings, you know, from, from um, so eventually we used the back we used the bagpipe uh, the Welsh bagpipe on the the, the second Tromlick album Mega Morgan, 
And uh, then Stevie was on Playfield wanted to introduce the Cruth, which is also a, a Welsh instrument. It wasn't, but it's not only a Welsh instrument, it's out for all at Europe, which, is, which had a kind of drone sound. And also then we introduced the Hurdy Gurdy. Um, and this, this had, uh, it, was, it was nice. But it, it had lost that rocking element. I mean, you know, it, it, it would mean, I think, be better just to have, plus me being a perfectionist, I, I, would, have, I would have wanted uh, to have been a bit more rocky rather than classically sounding. There was a man called J.D. Davis, J.G. J. Davis, I think, J. Glyn Davis, and he sailed on some ships. He was Welsh, but he sailed on some English ships and he started hearing these English shanties in the English language. So what he did, was he used the, he started writing words, uh, Welsh words, to these English shanty tunes, one of which is called Coddy Anger, which is Raising the Anchor. And it's just basically verses of what, 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 what they were doing and where they were going and, and what they had been doing. It was just kind of um, everyday songs every day, about everyday life. For instance, in the, the uh, Coddy Anger, the first verse is where we they say that the tide is coming ready for us to go away. And then it goes on to say the old will shop vowel a pound, so you better go away quickly. Then he says the last verse goes well. Farewell, Van Harriet, here who died. Uh, goodbye, my love, long as a journey, and I promise to marry Seddon. So he put the Welsh words to the English tunes, and what I've done with Coriango is I've used the English chorus, and of Leave Her Johnny, Leave Her, because that was a tune of Coriango. And I've combined the Welsh verses with the English chorus. My flame doubled in hockey above, my ghostly am a kimbo, her eye in me, better gone in ya, become Johnny. One of the songs that has, has a nice response from the audience that we do is a song called Tom Payne's Bones. And this song is about the books he wrote uh, and his books and his thoughts were influential in the start of the American Revolution. So it's a bouncy tune and, it, and it's, got, it's got ideas in there which uh, the audience seem to like. I dreamed out of one day by a river of discontent. I bumped a ride into old Tom Payne as I running down the road he went. He said, I can't stop right now, my son. King George is after me. He'll have a rope around my throat and he'll hang me from the liberty tree. So I will dance the Tom Payne's bone. Dance the Tom Payne's bones. Dance in the old. To the rhythm of Tom Payne's bones I will dance to Tom Payne's bones Dance to Tom Payne's bones Dance in the oldest boots I own To the rhythm of Tom Payne's bones He said I just spoke about freedom And justice for everyone 
air since the tiny dust words I smoked. I've been looking down the barrel of a gun. They say I preach a revolution, but let me say in my defense, so oh, all I did, whatever I went to, was talk about common sense. So I must dance to Tom Paine's bones, dance to Tom Paine's bones, and dance in the oldest boots I own to the rhythm of Tom Paine's bones. Tom Paine's bones, oh, dance in the oldest boots I own to the rhythm of Tom Paine's bones. Well, oh, Tom, Another aspect of the Welsh folk tradition was sometimes musicians wouldn't turn up for a dance that had been arranged, and therefore they utilised an aspect of uh, mouth music to utilize that for the people to dance to. Now I'll give you an example of this, which is known as the Gower Reel. I live in Flangin Dairen. It's a beautiful place to live. It epitomizes everything that is Welsh for me. It's got outside here uh, bits of a forest, some greenery, and the Gwendraith Vach, which is a, the, the small Gwendraith little river, floats through it. Can't see it, Mike, it's over the other side of a bank. And then it has a church, which originally was a Celtic church before it became Norman. It was a wooden thing. And the saint is Kindair. And, well, it's, it's, it's poetic living here. That's all I can say, it's poetic. It's a landscape. It's the mountains. It's the rivers. It's the beaches. It's a sense of belonging. And when you go away from Wales, you got that sense of what, they, what we call hiraith, the longing to be back here. It's green, very green. It's wet sometimes, well, most of the time, really. But it's a beautiful place to be, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else.